All right, everybody. Here we are with Seralem Ultimate. I'm going to go ahead and start a new game. At last, I found you. Do not be alarmed. This is merely a dream. You are the monarch of Seralem, yes? You try to say yes, but this happens to be one of those dreams where you can't speak. You also try, not, try to nod your head, but you can't move either. Whew, that's a relief. Imagine my embarrassment if I'd invaded the wrong dream. And fear not, despite your sleep paralysis, I can read your thoughts just fine. Now then, what should I call you? you call me Super. Super, you say? A fine name indeed. You can call me Caliban. You might think of me as a ghost or a phantasm or something of that nature. In other words, I don't exist in your world. I have another question for you. What is your specialization? So here we choose our starting specialization. Um, doesn't matter. Like I said in my first video, uh, a lot of them, a lot of them are easier to play with um, than others. But realistically, it you could read about them. The type of play style is kind of cool. Like the animator, definitely different than most. Defiler goes with debuffing. Each one starts with a certain creature, but again, you're going to collect all these in the future, so they're not special. They're just a, this particular specialization starts with this creature. So I'll just pick one. Wow, you took so long to tell me your specialization that you slept well past your normal waking time. I'll get right to the point then. You know of the kingdom of Nex, correct? You try to say yes, of course I know of Nex. They're the most trusted ally. We often trade jarred goods with each other, but you're still unable to speak. As I thought, listen carefully, listen closely, Suit Bear. The king of Nex is not to be trusted. Recently, he managed to procure the ultimate nether orb, a powerful relic that could be used to bend the gods to its user's will. I fear that he will use this orb to take control of the entire world of Rhodia. You attempt to snort dismissively and ask Caliban how he could possibly know of the ultimate nether orb's whereabouts, much less the king of Nexus' ambitions. I am confident in my accusations. I have observed his dreams and have seen what he's planning to do after his magi have finished char charging the orb. His future actions do not bode well for Rhodia. You don't have much time. Awaken now and tell your most trusted advisors what we spoke about in this dream. Formulate a strategy to infiltrate Nex and steal the ultimate nether orb so that it will not be used for ill purposes. Farewell, Super. We will speak again soon. Good morning, my liege. Well met, Super. Hail, Super. I, ha I hope this day finds you well. After nodding impatiently through the onslaught of greetings, you tell everyone about the dream you had last night. Caliban, eh? Haven't heard that name in quite some time. They say that if Caliban appears in your dreams, he'll haunt your sleep until you do as he says. Damios has the right of it. At least as far as the rumors claim. It all sounds a bit superstitious to me, like you're supposed to bring a cats on board a ship for good luck, or how you should kiss your granny on the lips while her mouth is full of porridge to rid yourself of disease. Anyway, I say we wait, wait things out and see if Caliban shows himself again. No sense in worrying about something that might have just been a trick of the mind, Super. Bear. Indeed. As for me, I don't ha I don't believe Calvin exists at all. Just an old story to help pass the time in the taverns is all it is. Sudden, unimaginable pain spurs up the back of your neck, through your forehead. You wince from the agony of all, and before long, your vision fades into darkness. Uh-oh. You don't believe in me, eh? What say you now? What do you mean, Super? And why are you making your voice so deep all of a sudden? And why are your eyes going red? And why are you floating a few inches off the ground? Imbecile! It is not Super, you misguided muttonhead! It is I, Caliban! Quit messing around, Super. You're not Caliban. 
It is a sad day indeed to learn that the fate of Rodia is rests in, the, in, in your incompetent hands. Yes, I am Calvin. Does the, the appearance truly leave everyone so skeptical? Ignore Hebron, Sir Caliban, and accept my apologies on his behalf. He's not all right in the head after all. So, Super spoke the truth of it. Caliban is real. Indeed. Guess Super's story was true after all. I'm sorely disappointed at how much time we've wasted prattling on about, at, about absolutely nothing. Now listen clear, carefully. As we don't have much time, you must travel the next and capture the ultimate nether orb before it's too late. Rally your men, summon your most powerful creatures, and get on with it at once. There's no way I'm letting Super get into any sort of danger. Deimos and I will handle this. I will try to be diplomatic about it at first, see if the ultimate nether orb even exists in next as you claim, then see about taking it someplace safe. Come, Hebron. We shall take our leave immediately. Everett, while we're away, work with Super to warn the other gods about Nex's ambitions and try to rally them to our cause. If our visit to Nex doesn't go according to plan, we'll need a, we know all the help we can get. We'll do what we must. Take care, Damios. Hey, Brun. Farewell. Nice meeting you, Sir Caliban. Very well. Then it is time to relinquish my control over this body. In the future, I pledge to communicate with all of you a bit more gratefully. That is to say, I won't take over Super's body and cause him excruciating amounts of pain. Well, that's good to know. Thanks, Dan. Glad that won't happen again. Right then, that just happened. Super, I'd offer to make the pilgrimage across Rodia to warn the gods in your stead, but we both know you're better suited for the task. Diplomacy's, Diplomacy's never been a point of strength for me. Not to mention the gods will respect you for seeking their aid in person. It's been since it's been a while since you've been out and about, so let's spend the rest of the day getting you back into the swing of things. When you're ready, say the word and we'll begin your training. Very well. Let's get started on your training. First, we'll review the basics of combat. They say that the best way to learn is by doing. So let's jump into the combat. Your Valkyrie Scout against my Unicorn Vivifier. Ready? There's no need to hold back, Your Majesty. Alright, so this is a I I would say essentially the same as like a creature battler. Um, you have different options. I don't think he has anything to cast. Just attack a few times, you're good. Boom, level two Valkyrie scout. Well done, that battle was fairly straightforward since both of us only have one creature. Later, you'll be able to take up to six creatures with you on your journey, and you'll fight up to six creatures at the same time. After you defeat an enemy, you'll gain some of that creature's mana. After you gather enough mana, you'll be able to summon that creature to use it in battle. Since you defeated my creature, you have enough mana to summon your very own Unicorn Vivifier now. Head eastward to the Summoning Brazier, and summon a new Unicorn Vivifier. Boom, Unicorn. Very good, Unicorn Vivifier will serve you well. Always remember to check on the summoning Brazier at two, Brazier, Brazier, to see what the new creature, what new creatures you can summon. Next, you should take a look at around the castle and familiarize yourself with its facilities. Your first stop should be the Menagerie. You'll find it to the western wing of the castle. Speak with Norta once you get there to learn more about it. Okay, Norta. Good day, your majesty. Welcome to the menagerie. What can I help you with today? You asked Norta to explain the in and ins and outs of the menagerie. Ah, a great question indeed. At the menagerie, I'll take care of your creatures for you while you're on your journey. You can only have up to six creatures in your party at a time, so you can leave any extras here. I'll ensure they're kept in tip-top shape. That is to say, I'll make sure they don't die of starvation and severe de dehydration. You can return to the Menagerie at any time to swap out creatures for your party if you would rather take another one instead. Lastly, you can use the Menagerie to change the order of the creatures in your party. Personally, I tend to allow my favorite creatures to take the lead, but this is mostly for cosmetic purposes anyways. And that's all there is to it. Whenever you summon a new creature, be sure to visit the Menagerie to configure your party. Farewell, Super. So we can swap things around. We can um, remove all the artifacts or skill gems. Bell gems from 
things that aren't in a menagerie group or all of them total we can order reorder our party we can put the however we want um pretty important once you summon a creature you'll probably have to go there to mess with stuff everett next you should visit the saban the blacksmith he will teach you how to forge and equip creatures with artifacts afterwards speak to Rhea, the enchantress she will teach you how to craft spell gems for your creatures to use in battle so up here we have saban hail your majesty what can he do for you today no don't say it i can tell by the look in your eyes you're here to forge an artifact for one of your creatures you're taken aback by the fact that saban thinks he thinks himself clever for knowing you're here to make use of his only function oh no no i can also tell that you look <laughs> tell by the look in your eye that you that you think I can only forge artifacts. The truth of the matter is that there's plenty more here to do that can be done to an artifact after it's been forged. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, I'll explain what artifacts are. Each of your creatures can equip an artifact. Artifacts come in five different var varieties. Swords, shields, staves, staves, boots, and helmets. The type of artifact determines the primary stat boost for the boosts. For example, sword boosts attack, uh, boots increase speed to create an artifact speak with me and choose forge give it a try right now forge a helmet oh you said sword okay <laughs> i didn't see that part i guess it was in the quest saban gathers your resources and begins hammering violently at the anvil despite the blacksmith's peculiar demeanor you can't help but appreciate his masterful familiarity with the with the mallet within a few minutes the hammering stops Saban hands you the artifact you requested. Sweet, my sword. Well done. That was easy enough, wasn't it? Each artifact has a tier. Artifacts start at tier one. You can upgrade your artifact to increase their tier. When you increase an artifact's tier, all of its stats increase. In addition, at certain tiers, your artifact will gain additional slots. You can find crafting materials to socket into these slots, allowing the artifact to gain new properties. The artifact you forged will gain a new stat slot at tier three try upgrading now whoops so we need to upgrade sword two three stat slot didn't mean to skip his conversation i'm assuming he wants me to socket that with this red amber so we got a socket we put this red amber in to increase that property tech very good as you continue to upgrade your artifacts you'll unlock new slots some slots are much more interesting than stat slots and allow your creature to do all kinds of crazy things in battle that uh, but that's a discussion for another time now keep in mind that an artifact is useless if it's not equipped go ahead and do that now all right so we go to press q go to creatures go down to equip artifacts e e boom fantastic you're natural what you learned today about artifacts is merely the basics and realistically guys this goes for this entire gosh darn game for more information you can consult the codex the codex is a vital source of information to help learn more about the game if you ever have any questions about how a certain part of the game works you should always check the codex for answers the codex also serves as a catalog of information you've acquired on your journey as you discover new creatures spells and other phenomena the codex will magically produce new information for you you can view the codex anytime for pressing q and blah blah oh i didn't mean to skip this conversation i wanted to go to the codex oh look at all these okay game information okay all right spell gems we go talk to Rhea. good day to you your majesty are you ready to learn about spell gems your creatures can equip spell gems which allow them to cast spells in battle each spell gem allows you to cast a different spell for example spell gem of fireball enables the creature to cast a fireball spell each spell gem has a certain number of charges each time a creature casts a spell a charge is removed from the spell gem if a spell gem runs out of charges your creatures won't be able to use that spell gem until it is recharged but don't worry all your spell gems will be recharged automatically when it returns to surrealum Let's start by creating a new spell gem. Speak with me and choose craft. And then, um, I didn't read it. She probably said a certain something. No, maybe not. Okay, very good. Next, you can equip this spell gem to your Valkyrie Scout. Press Q. Go to creatures. Go to manage spell gems. E, E, E. So now, oh. 
Much like artifacts, spell gems also have a tier. You can upgrade your spell gems to increase their tier, which increases the potency of the spell. At certain tiers, your spell gem will also gain a new slot, which you can be enchanted to give the spell gem a new property. These properties change the way your spells work. Lastly, keep an eye on it out during your travels for inscriptions. These items can be used to discover new spells for your craft. That's all for me now. If you have any more questions about spell gems, remember to check your codex. Take care, your majesty. I look forward to seeing you again. Okay. I see your creatures are properly equipped with artifacts and spell gems now. Very good. You are now ready to venture outside these wall castle walls and earn the favor of the gods. You should rest for the remainder of the day. Damios and Hebron should return from their journey early tomorrow morning, and you'll need to speak to them before you depart. We're going to take a nappy nap. After a busy day of learning extremely basic things, you head off the bed. You quickly fall asleep, only to be awakened by a startling dream about falling down a castle stairs. After falling back asleep once more, you awake yet again for a brief moment to flip your pillow upside down. It's nice and cool now. Back to sleep. You wake up yet again, courtesy of the muscle spasm in your left calf muscle. Tonight just isn't your night. Perhaps a warm glass of milk. Super. Wake up. Damios and Hebron have returned. Damn. Ah, uh, Hebron and Damios. Good to see the two of you returned safely. What happened? Did you find the ultimate nether orb? Yes. As Calvin claimed, we found the ultimate nether orb in Nex, and as planned, we tried to negotiate with Lucius to see if he could come up with a... Uh, if we could come to some understanding, and we were met with staunch resistance. Lucius destroyed most of our army all by himself. When Damios and I finally cornered him, the gods intervened. We nearly lost our lives before we managed to escape. I fear that Lucius already holds influence over many of the gods. They are not, after all, normally prone to physical intervention with the affairs of humans. I see. Then perhaps we should petition the gods and explain what is what is at stake for our world. Surely they will come to their senses and see our side of things. Perhaps they'll even aid us in obtaining the ultimate nether orb. It's a good plan, but that's not our only problem now. Before we fled, Lucius vanished, and he took the ultimate nether orb with him. We have no idea where he went, but it's safe to say that he won't be returning to Nex anytime soon for fear of us launching a follow-up attack. Indeed. Then, where do we go from here? Hebron and I will search for Lucius. In the meantime, Super, I believe you should move forward with your original plan to petition the gods and ask for their help. You should first focus on the Blood Grove. Apocrinox is the god of that realm. He is a master tracker, and his expertise will prove invaluable in helping us find the ultimate netherworld. That is an excellent idea indeed. Super, make haste to the Blood Grove and see if you can sway Apocrinox. Agreed. It's a sound plan. Good luck, Super. Damios and I will begin our search in other realms so we don't put all our eggs in one nest, so to speak. I farewell, Super and Everett. Away we go into battle. Super, head to the northern part of the castle and use the teleportation shrine to travel to the Blood Grove. Once you arrive, speak to Pachinox's altar and commune with it to speak to him. Good luck, Super. I will see that the castle defenses while you are away. You can count on me. We're free from the story for a minute. All right. So we come up here to this uh, realm, I don't know, altar. You choose a realm depth. Uh, you can only go up to your maximum, which is one for me. You choose a realm type, which is just Blood Grove for now. You'll unlock more later. All right. Welcome to your first realm. You'll receive a realm quest at the start of each realm. So the realm is like your, the level you're about to play, dungeon or whatever. These are short bite-sized quests that must be completed before you can proceed to the next realm. So we get a randomly generated quest, like get this item, you know, stuff like that. After you complete a realm quest, you'll receive a reward, and then you'll be able to use that realm's teleportation shrine to either travel to a new realm or return to your kingdom. When you complete a realm quest at the highest realm depth you've ever visited, you'll also receive perk points. That can be only used to unlock perks for your specialization. All right, so here's the world. Um, so one thing I wanna to touch on is by default, uh, gameplay, 
there are several different things that you can turn on double movement speed if you want to run faster for some reason speed run some stuff um, movement sounds are off I've got loot filter just to show strict so that it only shows like cool things uh, doesn't mean we're not getting anything maybe I'll do it normal um, battle animations I'll probably turn it off for the video don't show values of zero auto interact with the, with objects is what I have on that's off by default so you have to like press E on objects but well some of them like that one was a quest object that I had to collect with E but the rest you can just run over and you'll collect it get loot from it so it said talk to a Pachronox's altar which is here you approach the altar depicting a Pachronox god of the hunt the altar is beautifully carved and seems eerily realistic in its appearance you can't help but desire to touch it slowly you extend your hand towards the altar all but mesmerized by its beauty who goes there after taking a moment to recover from your startlement you explain the current situation the ultimate nether orb hmm yes i've heard of it in truth i always thought it to be a myth however i'd be remiss to ignore the reputable ruler of Seraylum. Very well, then. I will aid you in your quest to find the ultimate nether orb. But first, I must ask a favor of you. Deep within the blood grove prowls a powerful beast called Kichi. She is a creature of the Eft race. Find her so that I might tame her and call her my own. She'll prove an invaluable asset when it comes to tracking down the ultimate nether orb. Do this for me and I will attend your knights on their quest. Cool. Kichi doesn't appear to be anywhere nearby. Make your way to the teleportation shrine in this realm and use it to travel to a different part of the blood grove. Okay, so that was our realm quest, I guess, was to talk to him. We have perk points. We can press Q, go to character, perks. Uh, we have 10 points. So, we can't do these because it costs 100 to unlock that whole skill. But we can unlock... Yeah, we'll go over this later. Um, so it says, go to the teleportation shrine. I don't know where that is. But you can find random things. Here's a artifact trade slot item. We do a battle. In fact, it's quite important we do battles. Get a little EXP. Collect some items. You've eaten a lot of squash. Too much, in fact. You vomit everywhere. But what's this? There's something in the vomit. Crystals. All right, we got a trimmer plus decoration. Fight, fight, fight. Four little level ones. So here's firewood. You collect firewood, give it to these nomads, and they give you items. Start a battle with the set staters, satyrs. I don't know how to pronounce it. A little bit of battle. There's that teleportation trend. You can take that out of here. Keep eating a lot of squash to throw. But it is really good to collect all of this stuff. Like, I probably won't do it right now for the video. But everything is important. Everything that that you see. And the XP is always good. Knowledge. So I gain knowledge for that creature. Uh, you get more knowledge. And you're able to uh, summon that creature yourself. So you have to kill it a couple times. All right, we'll go ahead and go to the next area. I don't do a full clear. When I play by myself, do a complete full clear every time. It's fast enough. No, I sense that Kichi's not here either. Continue your search to the dark, deeper parts of Blood Grove. So now, I mean, I don't want to, like, rush through things. But, uh... So, and some of those things give you buffs. Like we just got Savage there. Uh oh 
too difficult. Yeah, we gotta do do a little bit of grinding. I like the way these guys look. So the so the Valk Valkyrie Scout has like a multi-hit chance and the Unicorn Vampire has a trait to revive other enemies when it attacks. I can't remember if it's 100% or not, but it might be. That's why, that's why the Valkyrie resurrected back there. I think the... Okay, so we leveled up our rank with, uh... With Epacronox. Very important to do. I mean, if you, if you want to start collecting things and actually play the game. And the beginning's fairly boring. There's really nothing that you can change up. I mean, I can go craft, like, some garbage skills, I guess, if I wanted. Um, but you can also inspect things, see what they do. If you wanted to get strategic with it. And you could set up macros if you want. Um, I explained that in my other video. Quite a complex system. Uh, just like any other RPGs sort of uh, kill macros. Like if my Valkyries at low health cast the creature will cast this spell. If everybody's at full health then cast this spell kind of thing okay uh seek him out in realm depth three explore away and again you can turn up the speed the movement speed just to get through this faster I probably won't do those again and lose. Um, when you die, the only thing that happens is your, you can see on the right, your fortune bonus will go back to zero. The fortune bonus is like a stacking buff of how many extra resources you get. So you can get up to 100% extra resources. And it, when you die, it resets to zero. So, not a huge, not a huge thing for death. So we can go, um, we can go back to town and summon some of those guys. I'm sure we've unlocked enough, uh, knowledge of them. <laughs> those noises. Blech. I think there's a map, isn't there? Yeah. Is there any way to zoom out? I can't remember. Okay. Alright, so let's go back to... The room. Go check out what we can summon. Okay, so we can summon all these guys. Might as well. I don't think they're very useful, but... Might as well, and then you can summon again, summon them again when you get knowledge again. Oh, I didn't... I forgot to put them in my party right away. That is what it is. Extra damage. Okay. Yes, this is the right place. Kichi's just up right ahead. Approach her with caution, Super. She's even more dangerous than she looks. After you weaken her, I'll capture her and tame her. All right, so it said... Oop, agility. Upon notice of your arrival, Kichi assumes a wary crouch, waiting for you to make the first move. You unleash a beastly roar and charge forward and are relieved beyond words to see that your creatures follow suit. Kichi lunges forward to meet your attack head on. All right, inspect it said. At the start of battle, this creature afflicts enemies with bleeding. Creatures with mending recover 30% health at the start of their turn. 
He has 106 health. So, both of these guys have mending. My guy also has mending. I don't know if that counts for me. I sort of doubt it. Uh, I don't know what threat we should go for here. Normally, in a playthrough that I do personally, I would just slam out a bunch of levels by myself. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll pause the video and do that. Maybe I'll have to do that. Very clearly. So, I'll pause here. I'll get a couple levels. And I'll be right back. Alright, here we go. Turbo mode. Our battle's going too slow for you. Consider enabling turbo mode. And that's what I've already done, by the way. Just to speed things up. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, the more knowledge you gain from fighting creatures, um, you'll unlock sort of, yeah, obviously knowledge about it, like we can see their health bar now. So the more, the more you defeat the same type of creature, the more knowledge, the more info you have about them. Kind of cool. Alright, attempt number two, I think it, my guys leveled up like once or something. I just wanted to give it a shot. Oh, we got a small amount of damage. I did teach uh, my third character there. Oh, did he change his... Oh, nope. I was thinking something else. Never mind. I also gave all my creatures... Uh, health artifacts just to help out a little bit I think we can god guys that guy is a lot of health you also can uh you could defend all right so we can defend which will decrease the damage we take provoke which will I don't think it's 100% but cause the enemy creatures to more often attack a certain creature so you can kind of create a uh, a tank of sorts and then whatever uh, whatever that creature did last in battle they'll continue to do so if you set up a macro for each character and set their default move to be that macro and assign the macro to them then you could just auto scroll through battle. They'll do everything they think is right according to your macro. All right, so we made it through. Well done, Super. Thanks to you, Kichi has been tamed. We'll need her to aid. We'll need her aid to seek out the ultimate Nether Orb, just as a hound can smell fresh meat from miles away. Fs can adapt. Adept uh, are adept at detecting magic from great distances. Kichi and I will take our leave and begin our search. I will return to you when I learn more. All things considered, that went quite well. You should return to Surrealum until ever. So we get our loot here. These are buffs. Temporary buffs. All right, we made it. Talk to Everett. It is good to see that you've returned in one piece, Super. Did you have any luck rallying at... Ap Apocrinox to our side. You explained to Everett that you were successfully captured Kichi for Apocrinox and return. And in return, he vowed to assist Hebron and Dame Dameos in their search for the ultimate Nether Orb. Ah, I should have known he'd ask for a favor first of, of you. Of you first. Very rarely do gods provide their aid to humans without expecting something in return. Nevertheless, I am glad to have Ap Apocrinox's. God, that's hard to say. Help. You've had a tiring day, Super, so I suggest you take some time off and enjoy yourself in the sanctity of your own castle. When you're ready for the next step in the journey, please speak to me again. Um, I don't... There's nothing really we need to do, so I'll just speak to Everett again. Not in the mood to rest, eh? That's the spirit. Sreilum is the ever-growing kingdom. Super, 
But I know it could be even better yet. Look around you. Can you not envision how magnificent your castle can look someday? For that reason, I believe your next step should be to travel to Frostbite Caverns and convene with Azurol, the god of winter. Azurol is a noble god who is always eager to work with humans. With his help, we will be able to expand our castle and make Sarelem the very best kingdom it can be. And more importantly, Azurol's knowledge will allow us to reinforce our kingdom's defenses. After all, if gods forbid, we don't up, we don't obtain the ultimate nether orb in time. We'll likely need a stronger fortification for which to defend ourselves. Good luck, Super. All right, so we go on to this next realm. Realm depth. Oh, you know what I want to do first is go through my perks. I haven't actually spent any yet. Um, actually, I'll do this off camera. I'm gonna read them all and get reacquainted with them, and then I'll choose something. All right, so I chose Censure. Your creatures deal additional damage of the healing they've received in current battle. So we'll see how that goes. All right, got our perk picked. Let's go to the Frostbite Caverns. Fight right off the bat. Oh, I need to select another creature. So anytime our guys, and they'd probably be prudent to attack things that aren't tougher initially. So as my guys heal, they gain extra damage. And they all have that, uh, because of that treant, I can't remember his name. Oh, there it is, Ebony Int. They all have a, at the start of their turn, they'll heal. So I'm just building out a little, uh, what do you do with these? I don't remember. Here's Azeral. Azeral's altar depicts the noble god of winter wielding his fabled winter maul, a relic that is said to be able to freeze enemies solid before shattering them to pieces. Greetings, esteemed ruler of Sorelum. I am Azeral, god of winter. To what do I owe the pleasure of arrival? You explain all the stuff. Ah, well then, you're, you've certainly come to the right place. I would be honored to teach you what I know about construction. Under normal circumstances, I would simply give you some materials, explain how to use them, and send you on your way. But alas, just this once, I must ask something of you first. You see, a giant cruncher has eaten through most of my stockpile of materials. And if someone doesn't stop it soon, I won't have anything left to hand out to the eager learners such as yourself. Seek out and destroy the cruncher, and I will be happy to teach you to expand your castle. Sounds easy enough. I trust that a mage as competent as yourself will have no trouble at all dealing with the meager cruncher. Good luck, Super. Leader of the Rome Quest. Got a costume. Look at that. Pretty cool. Okay. So to get out of here, we need to discover the... I mean, again, if this was my solo playthrough, I would adventure and grind and play it out. I, yeah, you can't forfeit out of battles. I can't remember if the forfeit option will... Let me see. Your creatures always have mending and take 15% less damage. Oh, that's not the one I thought it was. Okay. So I need the other... Creatures with mending recover... Okay, it is. Creatures with mending recover 30% health at the start of the turn. So it is what I thought it was. So the game 30% health at the start of each turn, just like that. The end healed, and he should supposedly gain attack. Okay. Is that what I need? Okay, that is what I need. So you need the fires to unlock those crystals for Ezreal. Where is your leaving point? Firewood crystal. Description, Master Hand. We can make another spell. Alright, so again, maybe focus on the weakest guy first. Both of these guys are trucks. Ooh. And I'll probably. 
note about battles. When a creature performs an action in battle, all subsequent actions are processed at the same exact time. However, they are displayed to you at one at a time to make them easier to read. For example, if your creature attacks an enemy three times, all of that damage is dealt at the same exact time, even though the damage values are displayed one at a time. This means that it might be, it might sometimes appear as if the creatures are attacking or casting a spell on a dead enemy, but that's not actually the case. Okay, that is good to know. Thank you. There is a lot of multi-hit and stuff later on in the game. The uh, creatures you run into, especially, so that's an inscription, that's another spell. <laughs> uh, the creatures you run into will become fused and more dangerous later on. <laughs> You'll see that uh, there is an option in the menu to disable the color morphing that happens when they're fused so you just see like their regular colors as they are now uh, but right now i have it disabled so when we do start running into fused monsters you'll see them as good old random colors um, yum, good old. okay here's our crystal to get out of here teleport to surround I do want to grab another creature. Okay. After your creatures are healed, they gain a random buff. Sure. Sounds good to me. That's a sort of goes along with what we're going for. Anybody else? Uh, creatures always have mending. Oh, this creature always has mending and leeching. This creature is 100% more healing from resource. So that's probably a good guy to get. Already have him. This creature has extra defense equal to 50% of the creature's defense adjacent to it. Okay, so. The two monsters left, well, the one monster left and one monster right of it will increase its defense from their defense. So that's cool. This creature deals additional damage with attacks and spells equal to its current health minus the target's current health. So if he has more health and they have less health, then he'll do more damage. When this creature attacks, it deals additional damage equal to 100% of his damage it took. So he's sort of like a tank. So we want him to provoke, uh, we want everything to attack him somehow, but then we want to attack. Uh, your creature's first three non ethereal uh, I'm not going to do too much spellcaster right now anyways. Alright, so we got a ghost. Let's just get back into it. Oh yeah, we're just looking for... Okay, so you could donate to get more favor with the gods. Um, and I don't have any... We haven't unlocked anything with him. And a little bit later on in the game, um, right now, obviously, we're working on a quest to... Okay, so also, side note, we unlocked these guys' health bars from fighting them in battle. So we know how much health they have. It's kind of cool. Um, later on in the game, we're going to unlock the fusion aspect. Like, later early game. Um, and then from there, you can just level up the creatures. I know I mentioned in my sort of beginning walkthrough, but you don't have to. Oh, uh, another side note. I do have the loot filter on, so it's just showing me like medium to high loot. It's not showing me all loot. All the loot is shown on the bottom, bottom left. So when you fuse a creature, like if you decide you want to come up with a new set of creatures, you can level them up to whatever your highest creature you've ever had is. So you don't have to worry about grinding anything out again. Pretty nifty little system. Uh, flags destroyed. Okay, so that's our little side mission here. One, two... Um, there are achievements for like destroy oh, some of the stuff on the ground is not it's just like garbage to destroy there are achievements to do that and like I said achievements are actually useful there's an emblem of Azura yeah. Yeah. description come on flags so our realm quest right now is to destroy those flags 
And there is an option just to make it so when you run over it, you destroy objects. Like I showed in the beginning, just as a reminder. Okay. That's a flag. So another flag, get all these inscription stuffs. Get everything. This reminds me of my other video where I just love gathering knowledge. Come on, tanky. I need to increase. Uh, maybe I'll stack these guys up with strength items. That might speed things up a little bit. Description. Flex, flex, flex. Oh. No, these guys are soft. Come on, trucky. Flag. Snowman. Tombstone is a little battle. Golem. Yeah, so you see the castle guy, we've only killed like one, so we don't know exactly how much health he is. We can always inspect him and check it out. But as it stands, we don't know. And sometime soon, after all this exploring, it might be worth looking at our skill gems, or spell gems, or whatever, see what we have unlocked. Just like the beginning ones aren't worth it. Yeah, you gotta be careful of that guy, because he has that trait that'll explode you. Flag, flag, flag. Realm quest complete. Hmm. Alright. Next. Alright. Wait, the, the oversized turtle is casually snacking on what appears to be <clears throat> completely useless debris. Most likely the remnants of Ezreal's materials. This must be Myrtle. You shake your fist angrily at Myrtle and yell at her to cease her imme eating immediately. Myrtle slowly turns her head to stare at you. Never want to back down from a confrontation. You stubbornly meet her gaze. In fact, today, you're feeling extra confident. So you tip your head back, stare down your nose for added effect. Suddenly, Myrtle opens her mouth wide and makes a high-pitched ah sound while running towards you at surprisingly fast speed. Immediately, you turn and run away, allowing your creatures to loyally intercept the attack. Go ahead. Okay, so with a brand new creature, we don't know what the heck she does, or I don't know what Myrtle is, boy or girl. After an enemy is killed, this creature gains 25% of stats and recovers 35% health. So it would behoove us to maybe just kill her or him or whatever it is. That way Myrtle's not so tanky. If it's possible, I don't know. Oh, is it whenever an enemy dies? Did I read it wrong? Wait, let me double check. Oh, after an enemy is killed. Interesting. I read that totally backwards. So it would behoove us to <laughs> not let that happen, but whatever. Did everybody, did all of these guys get the, get the same stats? No, it was just Myrtle. Okay. Well, I'll have to replay this battle. I'll figure something out. Everybody's too tough now. Can't fight anything. Um, well, at least this will teach. I can mention a lesson about this. Uh, okay, two things. So, we've taken enough turns that all the creatures on the battlefield take 20% more damage. Because they're getting tired. It's a fatigue mechan mechanism. Um, second mechanism, respawns. Respawns only trigger, I can't remember the number, uh, eight, six times, ten times, whatever. 
so you gotta be careful with that. Like, they, they won't just keep respawning because of the unicorn. I am gonna dump that guy. He is not helpful. Definitely cool with the rest of those. Let's grab... I don't know. I wish I had a way to level them up. But I don't. I don't think we ran into... I mean... I'll summon this guy. I don't know if I'll bring him. Do do. Let's just set up a sword. Socket the sword. Do I have amber? Nope. Sure, you can have a rose. Creatures. Oh, shoot. Alright, so this is one of those things that he. Manage groups, send creatures to a new group, one. So now I can remove all that of artifacts from creatures that aren't in a group. I think the creature I threw away had an artifact. There we go. Yeah, once you get once you used to things, it's a little bit. Oh, I should probably would have. Uh... Okay, well at least this is a little bit easier potentially. Nope. <laughs> Um, Dire Wolf lets us do sort of like a little mini multi-attack. So Dire Wolf's cool. It kinda sucks that we have a level one. That that's a poor choice, honestly. Yeah. This guy's gonna just one shot everybody. So for these fights, I think you're expected to power level a little bit. Not as jump in all willy-nilly like can we see his health right now no yeah you're expected to try a little harder this guy's becoming a truck so I'll probably, we'll cut the video here and uh, we'll finish the video here. We can take a look at, yeah, we unlocked quite a few different skills to craft. Um, so we'll end the video here. Uh, next time we'll start unlocking, I think mission uh, projects and we could start building out our, our castle and follow on with the main quest all right guys well that has been surrealum ultimate i'm super and thanks for watching hope you have a wonderful rest of your day